This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Ooh, that's a scary looking beginning, isn't it? Well, happy Halloween, everybody. You're tuned in to Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. And as you can see, it's Halloween, right at the time that we're shooting this show, just to start out with. And I'm DeSoto Brown. I'm the co-host of Human Humane Architecture. Our regular host, Martin Despang, is homesick today. So if we look at the general view here, I've got uh, a surrogate sitting in for Martin here uh, on the screen. <laughs> but we will be seeing Martin up on our screen, I think, in some, some small moments. Um, and today, Martin, tell us what we're talking about. Well, happy Halloween, everyone in DeSoto. You look great. Thank you. And so today is our, as you said, our Halloween edition of Human Humane Architecture. And thanks for bringing me in in these two different ways. And every once in a while, I'm floating up there. I'm the ghost, yes. and I feel like yes. a ghost because I caught that cold. And why would that matter to the audience? Because it gives us a chance to talk about what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about um, healthy buildings or the absence of it. I think what makes me sick is air conditioning here because yes. I came here to have the most natural and healthy air conditioning, which is called trade winds, but some people believe it's burning fossil fuels and blowing ice cold air in my face. And if we could get to picture one, this is our new discovery last show, which was um, dedicated to the same issue and uh, Brie Soleil doing it in a better way. We saw the new Howard Hughes Tower, which is all glazed and blazing um, people with sun. And here we see in Kaka'ako the next for the uh, lower income people who have even less money to run the air conditioning thing. So we don't give up to actually think about how can you do this better. And once again, our methodology is to learn from the best practices from the past for the future. So we go to the next picture and this reconnects to two previous shows one was about uh, tropical brutalism, and the other one was the just previous one, Brie, Brie Soleil, because this is a building here which is themed for uh, basically Halloween today. The Halloween theme is this is like pumpkin carving. The concrete mass was carved out and scored, and these slits, and that's where the air and the sun goes through, and it's filtered, and also by the majestic trees that we basically see, right? Correct, correct. But we don't want to talk, this is sort of history, we want to discover more, because when we did this show very slow, we discovered there are actually other ways that are slightly or not insignificantly different than this way of more monolithically doing it, doing it more filigree and more tectonically, and the next picture shows a prime example of that, which is just across the street. And which one is that? Well, this was built as the Department of the, the State Department of Highways building, and it opened in 1960 or 61. It is located on Punchbowl Street at Queen Street, and it's got these exterior vertical fins, and that's something we're going to be looking at today: vertical elements on the outsides of buildings. These fins are mounted in a way that they are not only decorative, and we're going to see that too, but they do serve a function to a degree as a brise soleil or as a protection against the sun. And in, uh, yeah, that's right, you can go to the next building, you can go to the next uh, picture. Here is the Atlas Insurance Company building, which is on King Street. And when I was looking at this, I was thinking, does this really qualify for what we're talking about? Because when you look mm -hmm. at this type of building straight on, you don't see those vertical elements. When you look a little bit from the side, from a diagonal, that's when they really start to show, as we can see in the photograph on the right. Yeah. And, and that again, reminds me of the last show, right, when you were looking at the Varsity building as a prime example for the Brie Soleil, and uh, also a very thinned out one, and you were questioning, you know, are these even concrete fins? Because all the examples we've shown so far are still staying within the primarily sort of associated to concrete uh, exotic brutalism which is concrete, but you were saying, can you even make it so thin? So maybe we jump to the next project because there is a point you cannot make it thinner and then you should use another material which we're gonna introduce, Correct. which is actually metal. That's and right. this is another, this is a prime example for that. Right. Uh, application. Right. This is a very historic building. It's the Hawaiian Life Insurance Building, which is on Kapilani Boulevard at P.E. Street, and it was built in the early 1950s, and it was the first 
multi-story building built on Kapiolani Boulevard. It's been restored to an appearance that is similar to what it looked like originally, but many people will remember this for many years as each one of those vertical louvers or elements was painted in a different rainbow color. So when you looked at it from the side, mm -hmm. it looked like a rainbow. And this has got a remnant of the hippie era in which it was kind of dressed up so that it would look a little more up to date. And fortunately, <laughs> to my mind, they have brought it back to its more original appearance. And I think it's, a, it's an elegant looking and attractive building. And it's very typical of the time period in the Brie Soleil type of manner as what mm -hmm. we discussed in our last show. Perfect, perfect Halloween edition. It was dressed up in rainbows. And the architect we should add uh, is Vladimir Asipov, our, one of our prime masters of biochromatic, exotic, uh, modern Hawaii architecture. To what degree there are sort of shading performatively, you guys should check it out when you go there, sort of. And probably the prime optimum example, we, we dedicated an entire show to, this is our next picture, this is the Alamana building, yeah. which had vertical aluminum fin, sun retractable, and um, yeah, these are gone, and we made a pitch to, to bring them back in, a, in an innovative way. And, we call this building, you know, very, very uh, exotic and not invasive because it was bringing, you know, cutting edge modern American technology, uh, but in a way that it was sort of performing the way, you know, buildings should perform in Hawaii. But it came sort of, the architect was a mainland architect, it's most commercial, John Graham, and the next picture refers to another show, previous show, Matt Emerging Architect, who had worked in this building, which is Leo Daly's headquarter in Omaha, Nebraska, where there were another version of aluminum, so thin metal screens that were Z-shaped and planned, very thin. And whereas the, probably the destiny and the fate of the Alamoana building was its motor, its engine, and its sort of wiring that probably, you know, went bad over the years as it does with old cars, who you then, unfortunately, if they're vintage, don't throw away. If you have a 60s Corvette and the power windows get shot, you don't throw the car away, nor do you seal the car and put AC in there, right? You don't fix the power windows, you just upgrade it. And here it was easier because it was on a manual crank, and the guy who was the caretaker of the building went twice and turned the crank and turned the louvers with the sun angles. And exactly these same louvers we have on the island, but in a slightly different way, and that's the next picture, and tell us where that is, uh, DeSoto. Well, this is a small uh, commercial building on uh, Wailai Avenue in Kaimuki, and these louvers just shade the front of the second story of this building, and it is a very typical modernist stripped down building. I like it has sort of a skeletal stairway that you can see on the right there, and the windows are very recessed from these vertical louvers, so they do provide a great deal of coverage, and they do provide a great deal of sun shading of this particular building, and it also adds, I think, a very interesting element to an extremely horizontal building, as you can see in the lower mm -hmm. picture, to have those vertical louvers as a contrasting element that still works very mm -hmm. nicely. Absolutely, and staying with that sort of more profane, you know, ordinary average typology, we go to the next picture, however, introducing another material that you can possibly use for sun slating building. Right, and so we're going from metal, which is more of a machine tooled thing that requires professional construction, it requires, requires a great deal more per, uh, proficiency and professionalism in installing it, whereas you can also use wood, as we see with these slats right here, which are, are Again, across the top of uh, a two-story building, which is in, located in Kapahulu, it's just a, um, the bottom floor is a Japanese restaurant. And with these wooden, barely even finished slats, which are still fairly rough textured, that's not too complex to install. And yet, you can put those up and get the same type of coverage, the same type of attractive frontage, and the same type of sun shading as you can with a more complex metal structure. Mm -hmm. And as always, I mean, here we share with the audience because it's Halloween, you got to, you know, trick and treat. So we share some treats, yeah. how we prepare for the shows. We get excited about a topic, 
And then we both venture out and we do what Docomomo calls the scavenger hunt. Yeah. And we look for these things. And this is just, we were rather successful, both of us separated from each other, but finding the same. This is just off Kapahulu in a little side street, a little Japanese eatery. And the same theme, the next picture is in Kakaako. Yeah. I believe it's a church. Yes. And it's the same wood slatted. And we go through materialities. You said in preparation for the show, the difference is between metal. Metal is invasive, has to be brought in from the mainland. You can't work with it. You need special labor. But wood, everyone can work with. You Correct. said a simple carpenter can do it. You can use some reclaimed lumber. You can use some invasive species of albicia and monkey pot and basically do this in a really sort of low budget, very high appealing way, right? Correct, correct. And you can do it to different typologies. So the next one is a more domestic typology and you found that gem where? Yeah, and this is in Waikiki. This is Pawakalani Street in the heart of Waikiki. This is the Queen Emma Apartments and again, a small unassuming uh, apartment building. What I do like, however, in this situation is that the wood slats, the vertical wood slats, although it doesn't show so much here, have a really nice rounded beveled lower edge. So they are not as raw, they're more finished looking, and it gives it a little more elegant look. It gives it a little more sophisticated and finished look to, again, what is a, just a low budget structure, which was never meant to be mm -hmm. all that elegant, but it has an attractive look. And talking, uh, getting more elegant or being more refined and being very artistic, this is the next picture. This is a classic example yeah. where here the wood almost got weaved. I mean, someone was making sort of a fabric out of wood and, you know, sliding in sort of not just one directional right. way, but interweaving it. Right? Correct. Correct. And, and what you're adding, you're adding texture to something which just mm -hmm. by itself wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily have it. But again, without a, com a lot of complexity and with a lot of, without a lot of uh, extra work, you can add texture to something which otherwise would look very uniform. And this is now, does no, no longer looks like this. This is the Beachwalk Ebtite Hotel mm -hmm. uh, in Waikiki mm -hmm. as it appeared in 1960. Mm -hmm. Our most sort of uh, probably outstanding example for that sort of methodology of Sun Slated is the next project here, which is uh, once again a rather profane. This is a, a, a dormitory housing for a hospital. Yeah. And um, here the entire building is clad with this wood slat screen. And as you said before the show, basically masking, camouflaging yes. everything of profanity behind. And also what might need sort of privacy and, and discretion is basically, and you also basically, so you, you perform once again in multiple ways. And, you know, if someone asks, well, what's the right sort of spacing of the slats to be thermally performative? It's basically like simple. It's like, you know, it's like solid and void. And just like with a yeah. tree, if you calculate the amount of voids between the leaves where the sun comes through. This is how much sun is okay to not heat you up, and the rest is dark and shaded, and that's what you need to shade it. And you gotta, you gotta figure out, you know, the right proportion. But we want to point out with the next project that it's very important to, uh, you know, design it from outside in. So the sun being your designer, but you need to go inside, being the occupant. And also basically, you know, decide the density of the slats, and then you got to negotiate. So, what's the next project, which is a new typology, which is basically transportation? This is actually how most of the people have their first sort of, um, um, uh, you know, experience with the islands. Where is that? So yeah, it's a Honolulu airport, and this again, as you pointed out, is Vladimir Osipov at work. And here are vertical slats, but as you can see, they have been. Uh, they've been fixed or they've been molded or they've been carved, is what I really want to mm -hmm. say, so that they create a three-dimensional um, convex form. And as you can see, it makes a wave pattern. So on one mm -hmm. hand, it's very utilitarian and it's very just these straight up and down slats, but they've also been added to so that they've got the rounded forms that adds a little more interest to them than they would have if they were just by themselves. And this is to dress up and make more attractive a large public space. And when the airport was remodeled in the 1970s, they added screens like this to what had otherwise been a totally utilitarian concrete block building with linoleum floors to dress it up and make it look more sophisticated than it had when it was first built. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and let's just move on and go through a couple more typologies to show you guys, you know, in what building types you can all basically um, apply this technology. And along these lines, uh, I'm going to publicly admit that I'm a sled addict, <laughs> yeah. and we do it all the time, and we stay with the next typology and the next picture. This is a subway canopy we did two years ago. Uh, where, once again, this is the Halloween edition here. This looks like a ghost, right? So or a skeleton. Something, uh, even that, it looks like you to so. That's right. Exactly. It looks like a skeleton Perfect. person, Perfect. yes. Exactly. And so it's like the skeleton is in between. You're not quite gone, but you're not quite there. So yeah. it's just you're reduced to the bones. That's another way to call it. Right. And the next picture is, once again, sharing the inside-out um, appearance, and it's referring to a great show of our dear colleague Tim Apicello, who's doing transportation, taking on that, that typology in, in a show, uh, public transportation. And, you know, in that specific case, the slats are doing more things. They're, first of all, sort of distributing the structural loads over all the members. So it's like a tectonic of solidarity. And rather than having huge, chunky columns, which is postmodern, which is not my favorite era, this is going to disperse it over, you know, the community of, of members, structurally speaking. Secondly, you, when you slant something, you're basically covering up the behind, so you won't see the dirt on glass, as in this case, and the top glass basically is the thinnest but laminated glass, so whenever a glass breaks, because some band will throw, some, throw a rock over it, on it, Basically, it cracks, but the lamination keeps it together, but it doesn't fall through because the density of the slat basically holds it in place. So slats can have a very, very, very multi-purposeful meaning. And the next picture is another typology, which is playing. In kindergarten, we did three years ago, two different applications. On the right, the entrance. To the left, the facade. And here we go, Halloween edition again, that we want to point out that the night appearance of slats can be rather beautiful and appealing because the light washes through and especially uh, from wood picks up the warm color and makes it look glow and talking ghosts, which we are today. And here the kids in the kindergarten call these windows the ghosts. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next project is a school for uh, mentally disabled children here where because the very special need to be comforted and cozy and feeling safe, we basically slat it, you know, the entrance over it, which, you know, you don't really see from the inside. That's the beauty of it. The slatting is like, depending on your distance, you know, to the slat, like the desperate house, well, housewife jealousy effect, right? Yeah. You can look out pretty well, yeah. but barely people can look in. And this is jumping back uh, to the last project one more time, please. This refers to a show that I did in the old show days of Urban Transcendence. If you guys watch that, our director of that kindergarten is rather beautifully explaining why she loves the slats so much because of that. She can sit, she has her office also behind slats, and she loves to get daylight, of course, and she loves to have the privacy, not being seen, but she can watch out and basically have supervision, which is a, jo which is a job. Yeah. Jumping to number 19 is pretty much the same mentally disabled tool. School, we slatted it over uh, the emergency stairs, which we also added slides to get the evacuate the children. Yeah, so we're going to flash that. And we camouflage that with, with slats. These slats are six meters, 18 feet long. It was only possible with this very special wood treatment, thermally, mining, uh, thermally modifying wood. And, you know, this gets me into technology. The next picture, number 20, is. Uh, I want you guys to make your own mistakes and maybe not uh, redoing Martins. And I was young and very ambitiously naive. And we did this building for the federal German government. This is a dining hall for, this, for the military. And very early by, by climatically at the turn of the century, we wanted to sunshade that huge glass front. And we did it solely effective with horizontal, almost horizontal, they're slightly tilted with planks and boards. But this is where every rain will sit on, and rain is the enemy of wood, and it will eventually, you know, the wood will bow and bend and basically eat the wood away. So maybe this is a knot to do so much. And we learn. So the next project is our own little branch office in Munich, which we used uh, not boards but flats again, and we cut them in a in a trapezoid shade, so the water, which you can see and in a little detail, can drip off, and it's also thermally modified, in this case, even popular. But the next picture, if you want to be on the safe side, stay vertical. That's what you identified at the beginning when we were looking through all the examples. Right. You say, oh, this is all going to be vertical, right? That's right. It's a vertical show. 
because Vertica is the vertical show. And the next picture, number 23, is getting us to the towards the last third of the show, getting back home to the island, which is basically showing our sort of teacher in slatting is nature. Right. Because a forest or a bamboo grove is basically the slatted methodology. Yes. Where there's the density and the multiplicity of the same member over and over again, and when it works in nature so well, why wouldn't it work in architecture right. equally well? Right. It gets us to number 24, which is a project that we also did a show about. And number 23 as well, we did a show about this specific project. And number 24, this is the project, which we call the Stratosphere, which is using cargo steel slash shipping containers. And they need to be shaded. And so we're using Albicia uh, slat that we had actually sort of even micro solarly engineered so they're not square dowels. They're basically rectilinear slats. They're deeper than they're wide. And so their spacing is basically uh, calculated by the sun angle. Right. So you absolutely make sure you're not going to. So it's micro engineered, bioclimatically micro engineered slats. And the next picture, number 25, is zooming out. Why don't we start slatting on an urban scale? And basically where you're sitting, uh, DeSoto, today, when you walk out, just imagine there are more skinny towers growing out of the ground where formerly the streets were, and you create a density that you don't have to worry about shading the buildings anymore because they shade themselves. And then you can use the slats as a beautiful screening device, as vernacular architecture has done a lot, especially inspired from Japan. And using the slats, as we've pointed out in previous show, as a great you know, privacy screening device. Right. So these are all possibilities uh, that gets us to the next picture, which is, you might call it crazy and feel free to, because we are and we want to be to a certain degree. but. How about this could become reality? And the next picture is like a what if, and after all, it's Halloween. So here to the left, you got a prime example of slats from nature. This is a banyan tree. All these crazy vertical roots are slats. To the right, you got a project that we wish would stop now because it gets easy breezy, then the window glass gets knocked out, but let's be afraid it's going to be enclosed again. But just for our Halloween satisfaction, let's imagine it would be stay open. And the building in the middle is something that our lovely guest uh, from our tropical tourism show some shows ago has beautifully, poetically, and romantically called the Shadow House. And this got us so excited to Soto that we might actually make a show about that. Do you want to give a little clue what that show might want to be about? Well, uh, which one is that going to be? I can't keep track of which one we're doing. The one in the middle, I think we have a really crazy as we are working title, which is a couple of P's. So I think it's like uh, post petroleum. Oh, okay. People parking. That's right. Wind. That's right. That's right. right. We're talking about Something redoing like parking floors of high rises into living spaces, but we won't get into that mm -hmm. now. And we will show many examples where basically parking garages have been slatted. Yeah. Yeah. So to some degree, they have been more beautifully and more romantically yes. and, you know, accordingly treated than people who are yes. just being brutally put behind glass. Yes, only. yes, that's exactly and, right. And um, so hopefully we got you guys really excited about, about flats now. However, uh, second to last picture now pouring a little bit of a water into that beautiful wine that we started to like, that flat wine here. Is this is our dear colleagues on our very own UH campus here, who, who with the best intentions, were um, sort of um, biclimatically bi upgrading uh, uh, a building, an existing building on campus, by actually adding slats. And as we talked before, and actually many had talked talked to me, and I talked to many, they weren't so excited about how it looked like. And so it's not just throwing a couple of slats at a, at a building with some brackets here. You know, this, uh, slats have to do with science and the arts, and this is what architecture actually has to do with. And you need to basically achieve both to be totally successful as a bioclimatic architect who uses the slat uh, methodology, which gets us to um, a very promising last picture, because we can cheer up here and give a lot of treats out to our dear colleagues from Tadpole, 
So Bundit and Janice have just, are about to complete this marvelous new building, which many, and me included, consider to be the currently most innovative, cutting edge, because reconnecting to these old mid-century roots that we continuously and relentlessly discuss here and point out to these principles. And tell me what you find so compelling about the building. Well, one of the things that I really like is that, um, first of all, it's kind of skeletal. You can kind of see what's going on. It has a bunch of different dynamic elements that are happening. But I also like, as you said, the fact that it looks old-fashioned in a good way, being mid-century. I also like that this is an innovative new use of concrete, as you pointed out. It looks sort of nostalgic to me because I like the way it looks, but I also I think the vertical slats are an elegant and attractive way to make a facade of a building. They serve not only for structural uh, elements and strength, but they also can serve as a breeze soleil and a comp as a uh, protection from the sun. So all of those things I think are happening there, and I hope that's what you were hoping I was going to say, because I think I see all of those going on there. Uh, beautifully said about a beautiful building and also kudos obviously to our dear colleague architects but also to great specific Rocky Mountain precast who are able and willing to do these beautiful things and basically do these I mean these are super thin in plan it's basically diamond shaped or also trapezoid shaped um, uh, fins out of concrete and they're you know, they have the technology, so we can basically reconnect and, and do these super thin fins that you admired so much yeah. at the varsity building, yeah. which, you know, were technically problematic because of the spalding. These probably have carbon fiber mesh in there. Right. So it's all doable. So yeah. thank you, Bundit and Janice, and yeah. thank you to Soto. I would say everyone keep on trigger and flatting, you know, from here on, not only today. And uh, this was a great Halloween uh, edition, this photo. Thank you very much. A pleasure, much. as always. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for watching us. And our next show is going to be two weeks from now. What are we talking about next week, Martin? Remind me. We actually sort of talk about the same, but surprisingly and excitingly uh, in, a, in a different way. And right. We call this show the sunscreen to why yeah. and we talk about another there's yet another way on that's top right. of the two ones that we now discussed ways to basically stay healthy and protected from the sun in our beautiful hawaii and look good while you're doing it too as you do happy <laughs> halloween again. happy halloween everybody see you next time on human humane architecture and think take away until then aloha and happy halloween